Hey guys, I'm Hugo. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and today we're going to be making spaghetti meatballs. This veganized version of the Italian classic spaghetti meatballs is probably one of my favorite go-to recipes at the moment. It's warming, hearty, flavorful, you name it, it ticks all of those boxes and it's absolutely a godsend when you've had a hard day and you just want to dive into a bowl of delicious carbs. Uh, it is absolutely perfect for making you feel a little bit better. Um, but the best thing about it is it is made completely of whole food ingredients. There's no weird additives or alternatives in there. It's just good whole food ingredients. And uh, you'll see from this recipe today how easy and how simple it is to make really delicious uh, vegan meatballs at home in your kitchen. So I'd urge you, you don't need to go out and um, buy these like, pre-prepared vegan meatballs from the supermarket. Just make it at home. It's a lot cheaper, it's a lot quicker and a lot more flavorful. Well, not maybe a lot quicker, but a lot more flavorful and a lot cheaper for sure. And you'll see today how wonderful it is. Okay, enough said, let's dive into the recipe and we can go from there. Okay, so the first thing we want to do for our spaghetti meatballs is prep the marinara sauce because that's going to be cooking off for about 30 minutes. We can leave it on the side. It's going to cook down while we do other stuff. So it's good to get it out of the way first. The first thing we want for our marinara sauce is we want two cans of plum tomatoes. Now I can't stress enough the, the, uh, how good the marinara sauce relies on how good your tomatoes are. So you really want to get good plum tomatoes, canned plum tomatoes, as best you can because that's going to elevate the flavor of the marinara sauce. Once you've got those uh, two cans of plum tomatoes, whack them in a bowl like this and we're just going to lightly crush them with our hands just so that we don't have any big pieces of plum tomatoes in the end sauce. So after you've crushed them with your hands, you should just get, you know, pieces like that. Oh, I've just got tomato everywhere. Um, but you don't want any big plum pieces basically. That's all we're doing here. I'm just going to Get a towel from my hands. Okay, so now that we've crushed our tomatoes with our hands, we're going to heat a couple tablespoons of olive oil in a small saucepan. And once this oil is nice and hot, I've just got two cloves of garlic that I'm gonna throw in there. And we'll just fry this off for literally 30 seconds um, until this garlic starts to color a little bit. Okay, that garlic's looking good. So I've got a couple of spices here that we're gonna pop in. So I've got two teaspoons of uh, dried oregano and I've got a teaspoon of dried paprika and just mix those into the oil. And then we're gonna pour in the crushed tomatoes. Now on top of the crushed tomatoes, I've got uh, a teaspoon of sugar that I'm going to put in uh, and a teaspoon of salt. Uh, preferably good sea salt like Maldon or um, Cornish Sea Salt Company. One of the two uh, will help it really elevate the, the flavor of tomatoes. And the reason we're putting sugar in there is we don't want it to be too tart a sauce for the marinara sauce. Um, so it's just going to give it a little bit more sweetness. And we're just going to bring this up to a simmer. All right, this is nicely simmering away and we're just gonna add in our final ingredient into this. Uh, normally, I would add a handful of basil just loosely chopped in there uh, just to cook alongside the tomatoes. But today we're gonna do a little bit of a seasonal variety or seasonal take on uh, this marinara sauce. And so here I've got about uh, seven or so grams of, of wild garlic with some grass there that I just picked from outside. Uh, if you're not familiar with wild garlic, it is exactly how it sounds, it's wild garlic. It's not the type of garlic bulb that you'll traditionally get at the supermarket. It's actually, um, it comes in leaves like this. And it's very potent, you'll recognize the smell once you're walking past any wild garlic. It's, it smells instantaneously very strongly of garlic. Normally about seven grams worth is about a, a, a garlic clove's worth. We're gonna add uh, this in now, just loosely chopped. It's gonna give 
the marinara sauce a lovely garlicky flavor and also give it a little bit of irony kind of spinach texture um, so it's going to work perfectly in place of the basil so just loosely chop and let's just throw that in and onto the, the, the surfaces as well okay now we threw uh, in the wild garlic or as I said if you want to be more traditional just throw in a bunch of ga uh, basil just loosely chopped we're going to cover and literally turn this down to a really low simmer and just cook this for 30 minutes and after 30 minutes tomato is going to be lovely cooked down really soft the sauce is going to taste absolutely delicious okay I'm going to put this on my extra hob over there so we're not going to see it for the time being but it is going to be cooking away Right, now our marinara sauce is done. We're gonna move on to prepping the meatballs. Now, the first thing we wanna do for the meatballs is we just wanna toast some fennel uh, seeds. And this is gonna give the meatballs a really kind of nice aniseedy, salty flavor. Um, if you don't like fennel seeds, I know it's kind of a, a little bit of a Marmite spice. You don't have to add it in. But what we're gonna do now is just toast a half a teaspoon of fennel seeds in about a tablespoon of olive oil. And uh, it's just gonna help bring out the fragrance of the fennel seeds. So just toss a half teaspoon of fennel seeds in. And yeah, we just wanna fry, uh, we just wanna literally bloom the fennel seeds in that oil, just so they're bubbling away and it starts to give off a nice aniseed licorice smell um, and just take, we'll take them off then. Cool, so it's been about 30 seconds to a minute or so. I can see these fennel seeds starting to bubble, smelling that licorice and uh, kind of aniseed uh, fragrance. So I'm just gonna take these off, turn it off, and I'm gonna pour this back into just a little small vessel just to keep for the um, meatballs later. Right, I'm gonna change this out for the food processor and then let's move on to prepping those meatballs with our hands. Cool beans. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do for these uh, meatballs is I'm gonna chop, uh, whoops, I'm gonna chop um, a one large onion and two cloves of garlic. Don't worry, you won't have to watch me do that. I'm gonna obviously fast forward the video. And as if by magic, there we go, the uh, onion and garlic has been chopped. Um, okay, we're gonna whack these into the food processor. And the, the onion and garlic, they don't need to be chopped super fine, just roughly chopped, um, because it's gonna get blitzed up anyway, but you just don't want too many large pieces of the onion or garlic in your meatballs. You kind of want an even consistency in there. So don't worry about dicing it too finely. Right, we got those in. And now we're gonna add in all of the rest of the ingredients. So first and foremost, we've got a can of drained black and cooked black beans. Um, that's gonna go in. Then we have obviously the toasted half a teaspoon of fennel that we did from earlier. And then I have two tablespoons of tomato paste. And a teaspoon of good quality sea salt or kosher, uh, kosher salt. And I've got about 10 or 15 grams of parsley. Don't worry about chopping it up. You can just whack it in there. It's gonna get processed to anything. And then we've got our dry ingredients here. So first of all, we have 50 grams of nutritional yeast. We've got 50 grams of chickpea flour. Now the chickpea flour, um, it may be a little bit hard to come by. I know some people don't have it in their local supermarket, etc. Um, if you want, you can just substitute it with plain flour. The thing is, the chickpea flour is gonna give it a lot better texture and it's gonna keep the meatballs together much better. So if you can find it, it's, uh, it's much better than just plain flour. Um, and then we've got 50 grams of plain oats. Cool. I think that's everything. Yeah, that is everything. Okay, so we're just literally gonna blitz this up now. So just whack on the lid and blitz it until it's a chunky-ish smooth paste. We don't want to blend it completely until it's uh, smooth. It needs to have a little bit of chunk in there still. 
Okay, this is looking good. So this is what I mean by not, uh, God, I'm trying to get the camera angles right here. This is what I mean by not too um, smooth. You can still see that we've got a little bit of um, black beans, a little bit of onions, a little bit of parsley in there. And that's gonna give great uh, burst notes of flavor in there. So don't over process it, because otherwise it would just go into like, this smooth lump mess. Right. Take that off and we're gonna shape these now. Okay, so the easiest way to shape these is uh, we need a good amount of flour to flour your hands so that it's not gonna to stick to your hands when you're, when you're shaping them. Um, so I've got here like a decent amount of flour in a small bowl that I'm just gonna pat my hands with. And then I've got a nice floured surface tray that we're gonna place the meatballs in after we've shaped them. So, to shape your meatballs, you want to grab a, I don't know what size that is, it's probably about a two inch across ball. Just pat your hands with some flour lightly and then just, just shape around like this into a circle. And we're just going to slightly make it into kind of a patty shape. And that's basically what you're looking for is like a small, I don't know what the shape is, my, uh, what I, my shape recollection is, is very poor for what this is. Um, but yeah, like a circle patty essentially, a small patty which is kind of quite thick. Um, and just place that on the side of the floured tray. I'm gonna make probably about 10 to 12 of these depending on how thick or how big you want them. I'm gonna look for about 10 because it's normally I want to probably about two or three per person. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and shape all of these now. Okay, there we go. So I've got actually about eight in there. I realized I didn't have enough to do 10 because I was making them quite large. To, as I said, it doesn't really matter what size you actually make them as long as they're consistent in shape and thickness is gonna work for you. So I've gone for about eight. You can do 12 smaller ones. You can do, you know, six big ones. Doesn't really matter, just consistency on shape. Right, I'm gonna, let's start frying these off now and um, then we can get to actually eating. I'm absolutely starving. Okay, we're into the final stretch. Let's fry these meatballs. Um, so just using a regular frying pan, we're gonna heat a decent amount of olive oil. And I mean, like enough to coat the entire bottom of the pan. So there's probably about, I wanna say five tablespoons worth there. Um, and heat it over a medium to high heat. And if you want, you can reduce the amount of olive oil we're using here. It's not super necessary to fry um, meatballs in that much oil, but it's gonna help give that really nice crunchy crust the meatballs that we really want for that bite. Um, so I'd recommend using that amount of olive oil. I know it's, it's quite, it's probably a bit dangerous, but anyway. Okay, now that oil is nice and hot and we want it to be pretty hot before we whack in these meatballs. Um, just wanna literally arrange all of the meatballs in the pan that you have. And now the meatballs are in and frying, you're just gonna fry them on one side without touching them, without doing anything uh, to them for about five minutes. Um, you can check the underside that it's not burning um, throughout that time, but don't move them too much. Uh, if they are burning a little bit, just turn down the heat and take off the pan, etc. But you want to cook it for five minutes because it's going to give a nice crust. So it's been about five minutes and let's turn these bad boys, see how they are on the un underside. Ooh, looking pretty good. So yeah, this is kind of how we want them to look really nice and kind of golden brown beautiful and then when you turn them you're just gonna use a fork or a spatula or something and just press them down just lightly just so they get a little bit more surface area for the other side not too much and then we're going to cook them again same amount of time on that side five minutes or so and They'll be lovely and crunchy after that. Okay, so it's been a further five minutes um, and these guys are looking great on the other side. 
Again, nicely crispy, nicely crunchy. It's exactly how you want them. And these are gonna be taste absolutely amazing with that sauce. Okay, let's turn this off and then we'll plate up everything together. So whilst we were cooking the meatballs, that marinara sauce has nicely cooked down and is lovely and gorgeous looking. You can see here that this is what it looks like now. We've got this really nice, luxurious, thick sauce. I've also gone ahead and outside of the uh, camera, I've just gone ahead and prepped some linguine. I know, not spaghetti, but actually I prefer linguine with uh, the meatballs. So not traditional, I know, but anyway. Um, okay, so in order to plate up, just grab a medium-sized pasta bowl. And let's just grab some of this pasta. A decent amount. Just plonk it in the middle. And we're gonna grab some of this delicious marinara sauce, spoon it over the top. And then I grab a couple of these meatballs. I like to do probably about two to three for per pasta dish. And we're just gonna finish off with some chopped fresh parsley and then a little bit of nutritional yeast. There we go, that is it. Spaghetti, meatballs, done. There you guys have it, vegan spaghetti meatballs. As I said at the start, probably one of my favorite recipes to have at the moment, especially since we're moving into spring and summer and you're getting those lighter evenings. It's a perfect dish to enjoy outside in the garden with a glass of wine in that evening sun. It is just a perfect wind me down from you know, potentially a hard week. Uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. If you have, please give us a thumbs up. Um, and if you have any comments or questions about the recipe, just leave them in the comment section below and I'll be sure to get back to you as soon as possible. As always, the full recipe link is in the description along with some other recipes, check them out. Um, but that's all for me and I will see you guys next time.